that's I want to talk about um, some numerical displays for descriptive statistics and uh, and what I did is here if you see on screen I, I went into connect math uh, because that's where the ebook is at and I'm gonna uh, click over here on the ebook and just kind of show you um, how the table of contents comes up and uh, we're roughly about here in the course on numerical summaries of data so I'm going to click on that and then you see the chapter sections that you can uh, pull down so so we have for 3.1 measures of central tendency and then in section 3.2 measures of spread or measures of variability and then um, measures of position. So what I'm going to do though is try to talk about how uh, the calculator uh, is used to get these values. And remember we said that uh, in the majority of the course uh, we won't be doing a lot of hand computations. Uh, we'll be relying heavily on that uh, TI-84 or equivalent. So I'm going to go into here uh, and click on the measures of spread section 3.1 and um, if we look at the objective, so we're going to compute the mean, or at least we're going to let the calculator uh, come up with the mean for us, uh, the median, and we're going to compare properties of the mean and median, and um, talk a little bit about the mode, and, uh, but we're not going to deal with group data, so that you won't need to know, and we won't have to deal with that. Though, so. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a brief overview on some of these things before we put the data into the calculator. Now, uh, the mean uh, is a, a measure of central tendency, and a lot of you have heard of that uh, before and may have done some computations with that where you have to take a set of data values and you add them up. And I'll give you an example here, uh, computing the mean uh, you would take these values here and then you would have to add them up so they take and add all those values up and get this total of uh, 406 and then uh, you'll see that we got what, one two three four five data values so you see down in the next part uh, when computing the mean uh, we're not done yet we don't just uh, add them up to get the mean we take and add them up so this total 406 uh, now is um, uh, here we have 406 and then divided by the 5. So the 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4 because we have 5 data values. Divide them up, get 81.2. So we would say the mean is uh, 81.2. Okay, so now the notation, this is for the um, symbols. And they're showing that this sigma here represents adding up values. And then um, the sample mean, this is a value or a symbol that we will use throughout the course. So you see this X bar. So X bar refers to the sample mean. Okay, so refers to the sample mean. And we get that by summing all the values up and dividing by N. So and they say basically the population mean is calculated the same way. You sum up all the values and divide by how many values are in the um, population. But you'll notice the only difference really is X bar sample mean. The mu is a symbol designating population mean. So let's get on to the median. And the median is another measure of central tendency. And it says, okay, let's compute the mean or the median of a data set. And uh, they say here, arrange the data values in increasing order. So you got to put them in order first, determine the number of data values. If it's odd, the median is the middle number. If it's even, it's the average of the two middle numbers. Okay, so, so the median you'll see they have one, two, three, four, five. So that's an odd number of data values. Put them in order. And then you take the number that's in the middle. 
of those. So this is the lowest, the next one, higher, higher, higher. Now the 83 is right in between those. So the idea of the median, if you notice, there are the same number of data values below the median that we have also above the median. So it's the point that divides your data up so that you have the same number of data values below the median that you have above the median. Okay. So now um, here, let's look at this set. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So when we put them in order, okay, from low to high, then the um, median would be right in between 15 and 19 because the number between 15 and 19 will give us, we'll have four data values below that number, okay, to the left. And then we'll have four data values to the right of that number, okay. And what they say is you can just kind of take these two numbers in the middle and average them or add them up and divide by two. So you get 17. So we would say 17 is a value in here, all right, between the two. It kind of splits those in half. So, so we got the mean and median. So let's look at the calculator. So they say, let's take these values and, and put them in. So uh, we're going to take and open up here a calculator. And then uh, what we want to do is uh, hit stat. All right. So if you have your calculator, we hit stat. And then if you look up here, you'll see edit, calc, and tests. Now, one thing nice about the 84 is when you hit stat, it automatically comes up ready with this screen and it's on edit. So it's assuming that you want to put some data values in and we want to do that. So we're right where we want to be. We're just going to hit enter and we get places to put in data. Now the data sets the variables that goes in up and down, right? So like they're going to vertical, vertical formats. So we're going to start here with L1. I'm just going to type a number in. So I'm going to randomly just pick some numbers and put eight and enter. And we see it appear over here and then 14 and enter. And you see how they appear over here in the data editor and 23 enter six enter and I'm picking some values at random enter 11 and 8 7 okay and 8 and enter okay so how many do I have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 data values okay and so that's as easy as it is early to put in um, the data into our calculator is very simple. So that's one of the things you have to do on the test. Now, the other thing is to find the descriptive statistics. So we're going to go back over here to the calculator, hit stat. And then I'm going to move over to calc. So I use these arrows and I use I go over to calc. And then it comes up on one var stats. And that's referring to one variable. So we only have one list of data values in there. So we want this one var stat. So we just need to hit enter. Okay. And depending on your calculator, uh, when it was made, uh, the newer ones have this list already there in for you. Okay, so you see list. L1 frequency list. We don't need to put anything there. We're just going to get down to um, calculate. Okay, I'm going to get a calculate. We hit enter. And that's it. So pretty simple. So we see here X bar 11.9. And then we have SX. So we didn't talk about this symbol yet, so we got some new symbols. We saw that sigma symbol in there. That meant add up all the x's. Okay, we don't really need that for now. Uh, this is adding up the x squareds, and this is used to be a way you could do the um, 
standard deviation easier by hand, but we're not going to use these ever in the course. SX we will use. So S is the standard deviation. Okay. So this is the sample standard deviation, the 6.7 and so on. And this symbol, sigma, is the population standard deviation for that set of data values. So we have uh, n equal 10, 10 data values. And then we get some other stuff here that we want to talk about. Uh, the minimum so the smallest data value is 6, and then Q1 is 8, and then we'll talk about that in a minute. Median, so we talked about the median. We said that was a measure of central tendency, 8.5. And Q3, 14, and then our maximum data value was 25. Okay, good. So we need all these data values here. And... Um, but as far as measures of central tendency, uh, again, we have the uh, mean and the median. Now, we haven't talked about the mode, um, but let's go back into stat. I'm going to go into stat, and I'm in edit. I'm going to click on that. And we'll look at the data values that we put in. So you'll see an 8, and an 8, and an 8. So the mode is the value that occurs most often in a data set. So in this case, we see 8 occurred the most. And um, sometimes your data set won't have a mode. So you just say no mode. Or it could be bimodal. Uh, it's not actually a good descriptive measure of central tendency. Okay. So sometimes it is in the middle, but it doesn't have to be. The mean and the median are our best measures, okay, for that. The mean, um, although is something, it's referred to as, um, it's sensitive uh, to outliers. So if we look at this data set, when we talk about those data values, we see that they're kind of close, but there's this one data value here, uh, 25. That's a lot different than the other way. So, so the mean... Uh, is sensitive to this data value right here because it's kind of far away from the other ones, meaning that it gets pulled towards it. So since the mean uh, is higher than the median, then we would say that it's kind of right skewed because of this high outlier. Now, if the mean were less than the median, then we would say it's left skewed or the mean is less than the median. Okay, we have a low outlier. But when we looked at the uh, descriptive statistics, we saw that when we did the one variable stats, okay, my mean was 11.9. My median, and I've got to go down, my median is 8.5. So see, my mean is a lot larger than my median. So this would be positively skewed. So we like to identify those types of things. So we get a good idea. Descriptive statistics are there to help us describe a set of data values and uh, to give us an idea of what maybe the distribution looks like. And then uh, in the next video, we'll talk more about the measures of variability. And we'll come back and talk about the standard deviation and this, these measures of position. Uh, but for now, uh, that's really all we're going to say about the uh, mean and median and mode is that the, again, remember that that mean is very commonly used. Uh, it's a um, good measure as long as we don't have outliers. The median is resistant or not affected by the um, descriptive statistics. So, so we are um, you going to not use the mode if we don't have to. All right, so we're going to end this, if I can, and then go on to the next video.